Ciao Juventino of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel. No, it's not the 25th of December yet, no, it is not Christmas yet, but I'm already wearing my Christmas jumper, for what reason? This morning at Zettel Sport, they totally put me in my Christmas mood. Snowflakes on their first page, and then Juve Regalo, Juve, there is a gift for you. I want to open that gift, I want to know what is inside. So we'll speak about Mercato with all the possible gifts inside, inside that box under the Christmas tree, and we'll also understand what kind of gift it is, because if we we know that Juve won 1-0 against Napoli, well, we'll have to discover also the table. Is Giuntoli wishing for a gift that is securing top 4? Or maybe is he going for a bigger gift for Max Allegri? A gift that can make sure that we are continuing to dream, to dream to battle until the end of the season for something bigger than top 4. We'll speak about all these kind of things in today's video, but of course, if you want to do a gift for the channel, it's not difficult, huh? you know what I will ask, maximum of like in today. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel if you didn't yet, because now we open Gazzetta dello Sport. Guardiola spinge Philips da Allegri. Guardiola is pushing Philips, Calvin, to Allegri. Juve regalo di Pep. Juve, there is a gift from Pep Guardiola. First of all, grazie Pep. Really, appreciate it that you want to do a gift for Juve. But we have to put everything in context. It's not the first time that we're speaking about Calvin Philips on the channel, linked to Juve. Yes, indeed, he is on that list of Giuntoli. He has always been monitored by Giuntoli, and it's a player that I tell you immediately I would not say no to in a certain context. You know it, I always said it's a player that I like. I see a lot of potential in, and uh, having him at Juve, I would not say no. Again, in a certain context. I will come back on that in a second. Why are they speaking about again about him? Because this week at Impress Conference, Pep Guardiola... Occasione Philips, Pep lo scarica, is actually saying it's over. It's over between Philips and City. Why? Because he's saying I'm really sad. Not about the player, but about the fact that he's not able to give him more minutes. He played a bit more than 200 minutes in the Premier League this season. Fantastic behavior. It's a role model. He's training hard. He has everything to deserve to play with City but also to play at Euro 2024. And that's the reason why Philips is also saying, you know what, I understand, I acknowledge, I need to play because otherwise I will not be called up for Euro 2024, which is one of my big objectives. So on one side, you have Guardiola that is really saying, you will not play with me because with all the things that I wish you the best and that I really believe in you and that you're a fantastic player, I don't see you in my Manchester City. On the other side, Philips is saying, I did my best, I did everything I could, if there is no affinity, as not as a person, but as a player to play in City, well, I need to play. I don't want that the train of Euro 2024 is just going over. So I want also to find another team. And that's where Guardiola and Manchester City are saying, you know what, let him go on loan for six months. And if possible, not to a direct competitor, United, Tottenham, Newcastle. You will tell me, Beppe, what kind of competitors Manchester City is the one that just won the treble? At the moment, they have a bit of difficulties in Premier League where they are not first. It's Liverpool that is first, followed by Arsenal and by Aston Villa. Well, they don't want to reinforce a direct competitor and that's why they would love to give him to Juve. Benzina per lo Scudetto. Fuel for the Scudetto. That's the second title of Gazzetta dello Sport about the player. Because he's a great player. It's a, it's a player that could reinforce Juventus. On the other side, with all the nice thing that I'm saying about him, I have to understand that it would be difficult to have him. First of all, because you can't just sign him. It's too expensive. Salary and also the transfer value, because they signed him, I believe, uh, like two seasons ago for more than 50 million euros. So impossible for Juve to sign a player on a permanent deal. Can they go for a loan with an option? Could be. But him reinforcing Juve at the moment would change the balance of Juve because he would play as a midfielder, as a regista, not a brain regista, not a Pjanic, not a Pirlo. Even if one day they said the Yorkshire Pirlo, with all the respect, eh, I like the player, but let's not exaggerate. But it's more a defensive regista, one that is breaking the lines and so on. He would even work in that Juve. The thing is, of course, that Locatelli would have to move. And now that we saw all the progress of Locatelli, that would change a bit the balance of that midfield. I'm not sure about the player. I'm not sure about him being the reinforcement that Juventus need. And luckily, we have Tutosport that is giving us other alternatives. Tutosport is saying today, Sudakov 
it's an option for the Scudetto. You see, Gazzetta is speaking about Scudetto, Tutto Sport is speaking about Scudetto, different objectives, different targets, but still the Scudetto in mind, that dream in mind. And you see, why is Sudakov a target? Because he's a player that could also change the way of playing as Juve, this time not really as a defensive regista, but more as a trequartista, going towards the tree, 4-1-2. He could be an ideal player with the missing, he is a bit the missing link of creativity that can play behind a Chiesa and a Dusan Vlaovic, increasing a bit the goals that we scored at the moment because you know it in Serie A we only scored 23 goals, which is not a lot, especially if we are looking at the first one on the table that scored 37. We are speaking about Inter, so we need to find some creativity. It's a player that is doing really well, he wants to leave already in January, costing a lot. 30 million euro you can go maybe negotiating to 25 money has to come from somewhere and we know it now it's not a secret anymore Ealing Jr. is further and further away from Serie A further further away from Juventus he's a player that could possibly bring us some cash with Tottenham that is clearly on the player now is Sudakov the only option well according to Tuto Sport no because there is also another player that is there Rodrigo De Paul but also there you see I believe the papers, I believe that Juve is there, but at the moment I see no continuity in the ideas, because if Calvin Phillips is a defensive regista, you know, the one that is going and breaking the lines, you have the pole that is a mezzala, you have Sudakov that is a trequartista, we are speaking about three players for the midfield, but three total different identities of players, total different ones, so the ideas are not really clear. Is it the idea of Juve that is not clear or is it the idea of the papers that is not clear? This is something that I still need to figure out. On the other side, they are giving us other options. Cope manners, the dream. I tell you immediately, it's a player that will not arrive in January. Between 45, 48 million euro, forget about Cope manners now. Maybe, who knows, in the in the summer, but not now. On the other side, they are also speaking about Hoiberg. Hoiberg that yesterday didn't start with Tottenham win 4-1, I believe. Uh, I don't remember against who. Uh, I watched the game. Newcastle. Newcastle, uh, he didn't play. As a starter, he entered at the 73rd minute, so not a lot of minutes for him so that I could observe him. But again, it's a player that I don't believe will leave Tottenham. Why? Because, you know, with the African Cup that will start in January, a lot of players will leave. They have a lot of injuries. I don't believe that's the player that will uh, that will go away. I tell you, and I repeat you, pay attention to Kone from Mönchengladbach. I will repeat it endlessly. Pay attention to Kone from Mönchengladbach. Anyway... A player that is able maybe to come back is Giorgio Chiellini, not as a player anymore, maybe as an agent, but not immediately. First he will come to Torino, he will come back in December, he will do the Christmas month here, because he, he played his last game with Los Angeles uh, two days ago, where unfortunately for him he lost the final, he will come back to be there, and I'm sure that we will see him soon at the stadium to watch his boys, I'm sure about that, will he come back immediately? No, but we know it, and we were already following all the interviews that he's left, he said, I don't want to become a coach, I want to become a manager, I still need to think if this has been my very last game on the field, or I will maybe do another journey, let's see. But anyway, the future of Giorgio Chiellini is more and more and more in black and white. It's just a matter of time. A matter of time? Well, we will need a bit of time to understand if Dusan Vlaovic will still be a Juve player next season. Well, I have to say that I'm super happy when his agent is coming to Torino. Because every time that the agent of Vlaovic is coming to Torino, he's assisting to a game and we are winning. The last time that he was there, he was assisting to the game Juve Lazio, we won 3-1. This time he was there in the stands, we won 1-0 against Napoli. So if the agent of Dusan Vlaovic wants to come back whenever he wants to at home, why not, huh? He's absolutely welcome. On the other side, they spoke about the renewal again. They continue to speak about it. Dusan Vlaovic next year will earn 12 million euro per season net, which means 24 million euro out of the pocket of the club. Too much for any club of Serie A. These salaries, yeah, they are not sustainable anymore. So Juventus wants to actually renew the contract of uh, Dusan until 2027 or 2028, going lower with his salary towards 8, 9 million euro net. Will they be able to do it? Well, it depends. At the moment, there is not a big, huge opening. So discussion will be quite hot. We will see. Uh, and probably the agent of Dusan will continue to come to Torino. I said it and I will repeat it whenever he wants. On the other side, there is a player that will not leave Juve. It is Federico Gatti 
fact that received in the summer big offers from Premier League, where his father was even saying, why not? It's a fantastic opportunity. It's a championship. It's a league that is really fitting your skills. Gatti said no. I have one objective in mind, I want to stay at Juve. And as he told me while I was live with him, do you remember when I announced his uh, renewal? He told me, Beppe, I want to win a Scudetto, a Cup, whatever. I want to start winning in my career. And I want to do it with Juve, so fantastic for him. Corriere dello Sport. Don't go away, eh, because there is something that I need to understand and I will ask you. Corriere dello Sport. Ammucchiata. Well, does that mean crowded? What are they speaking about? Crowded? Who? Look at the Serie A table. No, there is no Inter. No, there is no Juve because they are too far behind. They are, the screenshot didn't work. They are too far behind. Milan, 29. Roma, 25. Bologna, 25. Napoli, 24. Fiorentina, 24. Atalanta, 23. Monza and Lazio, 21 points each. All there, crowded to go and try to have the two remaining spots at the moment for the Champions League. Ragazzi, Bologna is doing a miracle. Yesterday they won 2-1 after 10 minutes, two goals of Zirigze. Bologna is playing great. And I'm happy that a lot of people are now realizing that Thiago Motta is a fantastic coach. Again, I'm happy with Max. I'm happy that we continue with Max. If there was one name sustainable, for me it was Thiago Motta. I said it way before a lot of people, I believe even before the month of May, I said, that's the guy where I was mocked a bit. I'm happy that people are reconsidering because he's really doing miracles. But I don't want to stop too much about Bologna that is really doing a miracle. They are fourth at the moment together with Roma. But going to Roma, fantastic assist yesterday. Did you see the assist of La Gioia? What a player, fantastic. The problem of La Gioia, 20 minutes and again, third injury of the season. It's a big pity yeah, for him. I'm sad for him. I, I will tell you, I don't regret that we didn't renew Dybala, you know it. It's a strong opinion, but it's an opinion that I really believe in. On the other side, I'm sad because he doesn't deserve it. Anyway, yesterday, I need to understand something. You remember how much we spoke about the difference in analyzing an episode whistling in favor or, or against Juve of the referees? Well, you remember that Bre Berardi touch on Bremer? They said it was a slip, it was a strip, and it was a bit high. And that was the explanation from VAR that was saying high foot, stripped or slide. That means it's not a red card. Okay, we agree, move, we move on. Then there was Boloca from, uh, against Paredes. You remember, the foot is going from Boloca on Paredes. It was low, was directly, it was not a strip, it's red card. And I dare say, okay, why not? If you explain me that when it's high and you're stripping but not going on the player, it's not a red. But when you're going low and it's on the player, and you are not tripping, then it's a red, I can understand the difference. But yesterday, Lukaku is going on Kwame, high, he slide, he's, he's tripping, the, the, the foot is not going directly, it's a red card. Then I don't understand anymore. Someone needs to explain me. And of course, it's a red card for, for Lukaku. Of course, if you are watching it in replay, in direct uh, live, of course, it's a red card. Like the one of Berardi was a red card on Bremer. You know, when we lost that 4-2 and probably would have lost even. But that's the thing that I don't understand. For Juve, they always find a really creative explanation. They should be consequent. The Berardi one was a red card. Don't try to find excuses. As the one of Lukaku was a red card. As the one of Boloca on Paredes was a red card. So consistency is what we Juventini are asking. And I finish telling you that I love these kind of beautiful fairy tales. Lens in 97-98 winning Ligue 1. Leicester in 15-16 winning the Premier League. One of the most beautiful miracles of football. Union Saint-Gilloise that came from second division in first division, playing the playoff and losing, unfortunately, only at the last game of the playoff against Bruges and lost the title, could have done a miracle. I loved the miracle of Napoli 22-23 uh, winning the Scudetto. Girona, that is doing a fantastic miracle yesterday, beating Barcelona. You know, it's always nice, fun to see these small clubs doing miracles. And then you will tell me, Beppe, did you really mention Napoli in that group of small clubs doing miracles? Ragazzi, 
how many times did I say they deserve to win that Scudetto last year? 22, 23. They totally deserved it. They smashed it. But I told you that all the stars were aligned. A Spalletti way of working that was fantastically in line with the opportunity of that World Cup. Doing two times a preseason with not a lot of players going to the World Cup. Having his team believing. Juve with minus 15, minus 10, 0. Minus 15, minus 10. You remember? Chaos. No competitors. Mind was totally free to go for yeah, you see this year it's not the same this year it's not the same they lost Juntoli and they probably underrated the loss of Juntoli Spalletti knew perfectly oh I will never have that opportunity twice in my life I did a miracle there is no way we will do it and look at the points Napoli is the team that is the worst in defending the title at match day 15 Nobody did worse than Napoli in defending their title because last year they had at the day, match day 15 17 points more than what they have now. Inter was at that moment the worst with minus 12 at match day 15. Napoli smashed the record. Then we see Juve 15 uh, 16 with minus 9. At the end, they won the Scudetto. Uh, minus 7 points in 1920, minus 6 and minus 4 for Juve. They always won that Scudetto. The only one they the only time they lost it was in 2021. Then Roma was at minus 3 versus what the year before when they won the Scudetto. We have to go in 2001, 2002. So you see the huge difference. Napoli that is not able to continue to win minus 17 in the same exact moment last year mamma mia mamma mia anyway put a maximum of like if you didn't yet we will maybe 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 if I have time come back on the Huysen and Kenan Yildiz in a second video later today if you didn't yet please put a maximum of like continue to subscribe grazie forza you bet